So the SEC did put out a proposal on custody rules, some of it that affects crypto. I would love to get your take on it. Um, you know, we're right now in the comment period. Um, what is your take on it and how does that affect, you know, your business? Well, it's been great for our business, actually. Um, uh, we, we are a qualified custodian. This is what we were built for and designed to do. Um, so all of a sudden, there's actually some clarity that says that any buddy that's underneath the advisors act in terms of how they take their products to market. So RAAs and wealth managers, et cetera, uh, is required to use a qualified custodian to store the assets that they have on behalf of their clients. Um, this isn't just uh, a regulatory move. I mean, first off, other asset classes do this already, yeah. um, but actually it just makes basic sense. One of the places that I like to focus on is where the regulatory needs and the investor needs and the security needs all overlap. So forget about regulatory for a moment, right? Like whatever you invest in, you want to know that the asset's not going to disappear behind your back. You you want to know that like if you're holding it or if you're hiring a bank that it is safe. Mm. Basic thing. And you know, we've definitely seen over the last, you know, 10 years a tremendous number of exchange hacks and failures. Digital assets are bearer instruments. They have a different security property than cash does. Um, not cash money. <laughs> yeah. Yet. But um, of course, it's got a different set of security parameters around it. And uh, qualified custodians have a couple of things going for it. First, you focus on the security and safekeeping. That is, is the job. Um, but second, you're not conflicted by way of being a trader or looking to make financial products. So, you know, at BitGo, I've been on stage, I don't know how many hundreds of times saying, you know, we really need to start separating the trade from the custody. And it it creates a check and a balance between the different parts and it starts to build the elements of market structure. So um, we can get into detail as to like where, uh, what types of companies or um, entities should be allowed to take risk and what type of risk and what type shouldn't. Um, and FTX, I think, is such a, a great example um, yeah. for a couple of reasons. Now, first off, remember Sam Bankman-Fried, just a fraudster. Mm -hmm. um, he will he will go to jail for that, and he's no different from Bernie Madoff. Right? There will always be fraudsters, and we try to put systems that catch them. But sooner or later, there's going to be another one that figures out a scheme that like takes a while to get caught. Hopefully, the government deals with that. In terms of market structure and how we build financial products, we have other things that we lean on as well. And inside of FTX, you had two basic entities. You had Alameda Research, which was a prop trading firm. Sometimes people call it a hedge fund. I think it was actually more prop trading, but hmm. prop traders, hedge funds are actually allowed to take pretty significant risks. Certainly on the prop side, proprietary capital, you're qualified investors, you know what you're getting into, you're going for high risk. If it blows up, it's your blow up. Um, hedge funds, similar. You know, we had Bill Huang's Ar Archegos just a year ago blow up spectacularly, and there was some collateral damage to that. Then the other side of FTX was the exchange. Mm -hmm. Now, exchanges are different than hedge funds and prop trading firms, right? You're actually supposed to have very contained risks. And the exchange in other markets, whether you're talking about derivatives markets like the CFTC or whether you're talking about equities markets, have a series of participants. You'll typically see exchanges, you'll see broker dealers, you'll see clearing houses, you'll see custodians and banks. And each of these takes a different role. But what the regulators do with each of those roles is try to really understand the risks being taken by that participant, make sure that it is well disclosed and understood to all parties, and then mitigate it as best it can. So FTX was supposed to be mitigating risk as part of an infrastructure provider. And this is so that all of us, whether we are retail or institutional, whatever we may be, have steady markets on which we're building our other finance, right? You can't have global commerce if you don't have reliable markets. And that's why we have market structure. So sadly, crypto does not have market structure today. It does not have significant market structure. Sam Bankman Fried was out there saying, hey, continue to have all of the different pieces. Just let me do all of them under one hood. It'll be great. And it didn't work that well, right? So the market structure tends to create isolation of risk, redundancy, that is robustness across those parties. So there's always a backup system, 
There's regulatory oversight to make sure that those parties are actually abiding by the risk mitigations that are needed, safety and soundness of the bank, things like that. And then we can all trade safely. Take your risks on the prop trading firm. That's fine. Taking your funds out of the exchange and giving it to the prop trading firm behind everybody else's back, that's fraud. Right. Um, so uh, anyway, I, I, I rambled a little bit there, but mm -hmm. but overall, I think um, what's happened in the last week, the SEC clarified that yes, investment advisors uh, types of funds are going to need use, quali use qualified custodians. That's generally good, I think, for the asset class, and so I'm pretty happy with that.